Okay, welcome to this bonus episode of Love Summit in which we're going to do our first ever product review. Absolutely. We don't normally do a lot of product reviews. Right, we get a lot of requests, but Jim and Melanie from Air Skirts are members of our Airstream unit and they've got a brand new product. They send it to us, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the important thing is we're under no obligation. We're, we, they're not reviewing it before we publish this. Mm -hmm. They don't know what we're going to say. And we're just going to say what we think. And. Of course, this is love subbing, right? So we're not going to give any opinions. We're, we're going to use data. We're going to use science. We're going to science this. So let's go ahead and start with this uh, review of what this product is. And what it's about. And why we use it and what we think of it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what comes with your air skirts inflatable cooler. First, you've got this cool uh, carrying bag with the uh, logo. And what I like about it is that it's sized appropriately. There's nothing worse than getting a carrying bag that you have to stuff like crazy so um yeah good job on that your cooler once it's deflated is in the center portion here with two hold down straps and a middle strap that is very convenient when you're um actually trying to get the cooler back into the bag making sure that strap is keeping things tight up top here you've got the nice little carrying area it comes with a standard uh sup or a stand up paddle board inflatable pump and I don't know, I like this little thing here. Um, you have a nice little gauge you can see. What do you need the gauge for? Well, what I do is I inflate it to 12 PSI, which is right in the middle of the green. So okay. um, what's cool about this is you've got two uh, ports, one inflates and one deflates to make sure you can get it all, all the air out so you can actually get it into its little case. A little hose. And the, the liner. The liner, the uh, air skirts comes with a cool little liner. It's got Velcro around the edge. That Velcro's around it. We'll show you that. It looks like it's doing pretty good. I think you had some discoloration, but you cleaned it with some Fantastic. Yes. And it looks like it came out pretty good. Yes. So no issues with the that. And finally, your standard repair kit um, that comes with usually most stand up paddle boards. So you get some glue, some air skirts, blue patches. A wrench for if you have to get the uh, little uh, plugs. plugs open. So yeah, that's what comes in with your air skirts. So this is the cooler in its stowed position where we would normally put it. And that way we can stack all kinds of stuff on top of this if we wanted to. Or we could put it in the bed of the truck or any place where there's storage that you don't need a cooler 724. You know, A large, that's... huge one like that. Right. I mean, a Yeti is a great cooler, though even our little igloo was. But the thing is, is it's always a rigid structure. This deflates down and becomes the primary advantage of the air skirts cooler uh, versus some of the more rigid ones. All right, I've got it on the inflate portion. Three ports to inflate, the top, the bottom, and the sides. I usually inflate the bottom first, the top second, and the sides last. Any particular reason? No, not at all. <laughs> I just came up with that. It is my patented air skirts inflation method. Um, I don't know if Air skirt sees differently, but that's how I do it. But this is the only thing I'll make a point of is that this thing tends to fall out Harshly. a whole lot. And I don't think that's air skirt's fault, but especially when you're doing the side one. When you're doing the top and the bottom, it doesn't seem to be a problem, but on the side one, it tends to fall out a lot. You've got to get it just right in the orientation. <laughs> That's always fun when it does that. And there you have it, less than five minutes. And lastly, we'll just go ahead and put the liner in. So that was one comment that I noticed was that the liner was a fairly good fit, but not perfect. perfect. And here at Love Sub, and we like perfect. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the science that we're going to do to determine if this cooler is a good product or not. Okay. What's the first step in any science that we do? You always quiz me on this. Um, the null hypothesis. Yes. And so what is our null hypothesis for this issue? There is no difference between this cooler or a regular kind of portable compact cooler. What we're going to do is a couple different things. We've determined the volume, the interior volume of both coolers. We're going to measure out the same amount of ice per the volume of the cooler. So the first cooler will have, I think, 3.8 um, 
uh, pounds of ice and this cooler will have 10.2 pounds of ice. We've got two bags. We're going to have two different measuring ports where we've got aluminum foil that we've taped to the side so that we can measure the temperature very accurately on the side in the front. We'll use our infrared probe to check that. We'll use our infrared camera to look for any cold spots or hot spots. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the math and we'll figure out which one performs better or the same and whether we have to accept or reject our null hypotheses. Let's do some science. These are our test samples we'll be putting in. I'm gonna get an initial temperature. So what's the first temperature? 68.9. We'll get a feel for these cans. 83, 84, 83. So we'll say 84 degrees. And what's the ambient temperature right now? 87. All right. Close, Close the right. sky up. 69 on the front. Side is also 69. 84.9. All right, so we'll call it about 83-ish. This is sort of a crappy old cooler that we have, so it's not we're not comparing apples to apples here. Once the coolers were loaded, we conducted an infrared thermography scan. What we're looking for here is any cold spots or any escaping cold air. The other thing that's kind of interesting is notice how hot the uh, red color got on the small cooler versus the light blue of the air skirts cooler. All right, it is 5.30 now. We've had these out for about four hours. You can see the sun is going down, so mm -hmm. it's starting to cool off. It's probably, what, yes. about 70? Yeah, about 75, 76. Versus the 87 that it was. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things are gonna happen in quick succession here. The first is we're gonna open up the air skirts cooler and I'm gonna do some infrared thermography of what it looks like inside. And then I'm gonna take some thermal temperatures of our test points on the front, the side, and the cans. Close that up. We'll repeat the process with the, uh, the igloo cooler. cooler. Yep. And the then cheap, we'll go. The cheap egg cooler. The, yeah, well, the, it's cheap, but I think they use those for like transporting hearts and kidneys and stuff. You see that <laughs> on TV. So it seems to work back then. So, yeah, let's go ahead and then we'll dump the water off. We'll see how much melted. And we'll get some actual data here on these two coolers. Should be good. All right, ready? So let's get some infrared thermography here. Ready? All right, go ahead and open her up. All right, everything looking pretty cold. All right, let's go ahead and get some temperatures. Okay. Side is 44.4, 51 on the front, and the cans are about 45 degrees each. That's still looking pretty cold. Not so much in the sides though. All right, let's go ahead and the front, but we'll do the side first, 41. The front is 43 and the cans are about 46. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and dump the water and we'll see how much melt ice melted in each of these two coolers to get a quantitative look at ice melt. So are you weighing this or are you measuring it? I'm weighing it. Any particular reason why? Because we added the ice by weight. Two pounds, two and a half. Ooh, got a little on my toes, that's chilly. So we're gonna add up the numbers. We're gonna go ahead and compare them to what we put in there. And we'll give some quantitative data as to the cooler melt system patented by Love Subbing. So after weighing all the water, here's the results of our test. The Air Skirts cooler lost 62% of its ice to water, whereas the Igloo cooler lost 65% of its ice to water. Therefore, we must accept our null hypothesis and determine that there's no real difference between the two. All right, well, there you have it. Our science for checking out this new product from Air Skirts, this new inflatable cooler. We've had it for about two, three months now, two months now. Yeah, two months now. Using it constantly on the road. Mm -hmm. And what are your impressions? My impressions are that it works just as well as a regular cooler. Yep. It's convenient to have when you really need a large cooler, but it doesn't need to be there all the time. Is it the best cooler in the world? Uh, you know, I don't know if it is the best cooler. We couldn't test it against a Yeti because we don't have a Yeti. But, right. And like you say, for those emergency situations, let's say you've got one of the RVs now that don't have propane, mm -hmm. that are just on battery and electricity, and bam, your power goes out for a couple days right. for whatever reason, and you can't recharge your batteries. Well, all of a sudden you can inflate this puppy, put all your stuff in it, and you're good to go. And it would be convenient if you had to defrost your fridge, or if you had to move a lot of your stuff from your refrigerator to another refrigerator for whatever reason. $2.99 for now mm -hmm. or $3.99 is what it's going to be coming up soon. 
uh, once the initial deal is over, once the pre-orders are done. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, brand new product. We're loving it. Air skirts, good job. So if you like this product review, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you have a larger cooler and if you find it useful. Well, what you think about the inflatable cooler? Mm -hmm. Good idea? Yeah. Bad idea? Yeah. What? Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos and the occasional, well, not occasional, it was our first one ever. Yeah. Product review <laughs> every once in a while. Thanks, Thanks. for watching.